The struggle against Native Americans and colonists was ever present since European settlers first stepped onto American soil. With constant feuds over borders, halting the spread of European ideals, debates over a religion, the eradication of cultures, and hundreds more. The natives were always trying to hold their ground and push back to keep their rightful land, but lost at almost every single step. After these battles were finished, the Europeans had taken everything, forming states and territories to fit their needs at the cost of millions of native lives. Yet specifically, in the Great Lakes region, there were a few groups who truly stood out, that being Pontiac's Rebellion, the Northwestern Confederacy, and Tecumseh's Confederacy, all who were enraged by the incoming British and Americans planning to poach their land. Their biggest impact as a frontier against American and British expansion was of the documents that were signed based on their successes and failures, being that with the creation of still standing borders, treatment of natives, and the beginning of large scale wars. May 1763, the Great Lakes region. Pontiac of the Ottawa tribe began forming a loose coalition of Native Americans to attempt at putting an end to the encroaching settlers. This stemmed from the signing of the Treaty of Paris just a few months before, which ended the French and Indian War and handed all land over to the British. The natives were distraught at the loss of their allies and the now incoming colonists from over the Appalachian Mountains. Pontiac was able to band together many of the tribes from the surrounding territory against the British Empire. This had begun in the Michigan area, but soon swept through the entirety of the Native American territories from Canada to Louisiana and into Maine. In short manner, they performed eight different attacks on these British settlements and forts, the most notable being that of the Battle of Fort Pitt, where it has been famously claimed that the colonists spread polio-ridden blankets throughout the Native American ranks. This all came to an end after the British Army made an expedition that led to the negotiations of peace treaties with them, both realizing the war had come to a standstill. Eventually, the British government issued the Royal Proclamation of 1763, which created new boundaries between settlers and natives, claiming that no English man could step foot into these native territories, but it didn't last. Twenty years later, in 1785, a similar movement was put into motion by the Northwestern Confederacy. This consisted of tribes from Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, and part of Minnesota, or the region to be claimed as the Northwestern Territory in 1787 by the Northwest Ordinance. This confederation was established by Mohawk military and political leader Joseph Brandt, with Miami Little Turtle and Shawnee Blue Jacket acting as war chiefs. Like Pontiac, they planned to oppose the Americans, not believing that they had been conquered. They attempted to simply voice their complaints and hope that the Americans would see their side and step down, but this was obviously not listened to. Brandt, unlike other natives, was very accepting of European culture like how he adorned their clothing, or that he was a devout member of the Christian church. Although he accepted some of their culture, this did not mean that he sympathized with the Americans. We are tired out and making complaints and getting no redress. Brandt. He worked as a negotiator, speaking to both George Washington and King George III. Another important figure in this confederation was that of Little Turtle, leading their army through almost every single battle even being seen as a true threat by the Americans after the natives completely annihilated the Yankees in an ambush of the battles against St. Clair, labeled as one of America's largest military failures ever. Finally, three years later in 1794, the last conflict occurred at the Battle of Fallen Timbers, where both sides experienced casualties and soon led to the signing of the Treaty of Greenville, where the Confederacy gave up claims to most of Ohio and parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. Yet not everyone in the Confederacy agreed with Little Turtle's actions, especially that of War Chief Tecumseh, who believed that the Americans had no right to take their land, leading to another Confederacy being formed. eighteen oh eight, the Great Lakes. Shawnee War Chief Tecumseh began rising to power among native groups aided in his effort by his influential shaman brother, the Prophet. 
They believed that Little Turtle made the wrong choice in succumbing to the Treaty of Greenville and that no one truly owns land. We do not own the land. Land is like air and water. No one owns it. Tecumseh. He first began his campaign southernward towards Tennessee, Georgia, and Mississippi, but soon realized that they had accepted much of the American culture and that they did not want to oppose those who gave them these resources. Unable to get through to them, Tecumseh traveled and soon found followers in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, all who had been berated by American settlers ever since the French and Indian War. This was ultimately the demise of the Confederacy, since so many natives have come to the realization that becoming complacent would lead to a better outcome than fighting. But Tecumseh didn't want to believe that the Americans were so many leagues ahead in power, so they pushed on, always prosecuting the Americans for taking land that is not rightfully theirs. Then finally, it came to a climax at the first engagement, the Battle of Tippecanoe. This battle pinned the Prophet versus Governor William Henry Harrison, the same man who became the ninth president of the United States in 1840. The reason that the prophet was leading the charge was because Tecumseh was away recruiting more warriors, which spelled disaster for their army. The prophet led his warriors to believe that they were invincible and that they could charge into battle without a worry because their gods were looking down upon them with grace. This was not true. They left from Prophetstown and attempted a sneak attack on Harrison, but he was able to hold his ground for hours then pushing on to Prophetstown and burning it to the ground. This destroyed the Confederation's food and weapon reserves and ended with over 150 natives dead. This was a loss that they never fully recovered from. While attempting to rebuild the, his Confederation, Tecumseh saw it as a good idea to side with the British against the Americans, acting as soldiers for their army and playing a role in America's decision to declare war on Britain in the War of 1812. Just a year later, in 1813, Tecumseh was killed in battle, being the final blow to the Confederation's sorrowful demise. The Prophet retained only a small percentage of the followers, but they were nothing without their leader, Tecumseh. These three groups left a massive impact on Indiana and its surrounding states. Had there been no one standing in the way, every single one of these documents would have ceased to exist. The Royal Proclamation of 1763, the Treaty of Greenville, and the Declaration of War in 1812. These conflicts shaped how Americans treated those natives, being mercilessly slaughtered and exiled from their own land just because they opposed the erasure of their culture and freedoms. Something such as the Treaty of Greenville established Ohio borders in the seeding of the land and led to the creation of Indiana and Illinois' biggest cities. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 was made to stop the English from pushing forward and stealing any more land, but their true colors were shown and they pushed onwards, further destroying the relationship between settlers and natives. The most important being that of the Declaration of War of 1812. Since one of the main reasons for the war starting was because of America's want to expand farther, so had none of these groups stood their ground earlier and let America take over, the war could have possibly never happened. The development of these states wouldn't have been anywhere near the same without these documents and events, and so would have the treatment of natives in the future. Indiana to its core is fundamentally different from what it could have been without Native Americans taking action and being determined to hold on.